right, folks, welcome. Let me share my screen. I, I put together a quick agenda. Um, I was uh, getting together some uh, links and gathering some stuff, and it turned into a whole presentation. So hopefully you will enjoy it. Um, here's the quick agenda. Um, just a regular operator framework update on what's going on. I just pulled off a, a few interesting things to talk about. Um, wanted to talk about OPM a little bit. I know we've talked about this uh, in the past a little bit and pointed to this enhancement proposal. I just wanted to get um, some more attention on that. Um, and then I wanted to give also a quick overview of a tool called Cuddle, um, which is a Kubernetes testing tool that we're going to be integrating into Scorecard. And I think some of that initial work has just landed or is about to land. Um, so we'll talk through that. And then a great group of user researchers at Red Hat um, spent some time talking to operator authors about um, how they think about building operators, some of the, the issues that they're seeing and uh, issues that they have just uh, kind of understanding or where, where to go next. Um, so I just want to talk through some of that research. It's, it's kind of interesting for the group to see. Um, and then uh, I doubt that'll take us all of the time, so we'll have a little bit of uh, time left over for folks to, um, as always, talk about problems they're hitting in their uh, projects, any questions they have, any advice, uh, things like that. Um, and, and if anybody else wants to talk about anything in particular, um, we can do that as well. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, this is totally collaborative. I just, these slides are a little formal, but I just wanted to collect some links and scroll through some stuff. Um, and so we can uh, interrupt as much as you want. All right, let's cruise forward. Um, First uh, item I want to talk about is um, a bunch of uh, work just landed to have a new type of update graph. Um, so if you're familiar with the kind of model that we have today, every version of a, a CSV, which is the you know um, manifest that has a bunch of metadata about your operator, says, I replaced this version, um, and I can also, uh, you can skip these versions to get to me, um, is roughly kind of how it works. Um, and so that's like an update graph, you know, like kind of like a graph database where you've got nodes uh, that connect things together, um, where you have to kind of explicitly create this graph. Um, each CSV, you need to, you know, go say this, which one this replaces and all this stuff. And it's a little bit cumbersome if you don't need that complexity. Um, so uh, we added a Simver, Simver based update graph, which is just, you know, the, the regular Simver process. Um, OLM will just upgrade you according to that uh, major minor patch um, versioning scheme like we're all used to. Um, this is really cool because you don't have to be explicit about your update graph. Um, and then, you know, you can just tag your releases as you normally do, um, ship them into a catalog, and you're good to go. Um, and uh, this is going to be really, really cool. So I wanted to, um, I've got um, one kind of screenshot of what this looks like in the in the docs. Um, this is in the enhancements um, proposal, I believe, um, for uh, Simver based updates. Um, and so you can see here that uh, you know you just have your etcd operator, um, and instead of having to put this replaces uh, field right here and being very explicit about it, you go from you know one nine or zero nine zero to zero nine two. Um, you can just omit that and move forward. Um, so pretty cool. Um, should be like a, a very small win, um, but I think it's something that would be very popular. Um, and then uh, following that is then um, Simver support in the um, skip range so that you can um, skip to different uh, versions in the in the Simver. This is if you um, happen to release something that doesn't work um, like you you thought, uh, if you get a, a bug report or something like that, you can get a new version out um, and start skipping that. Um, and so always when you're doing uh, anything related to updates, please, please test um, and please, please um, think a little bit uh, further ahead in how you future-proof yourself. Um, can save everybody a lot of headache um, instead of being super reactionary. Um, so you can find this. This is in the Operator um, Lifecycle Manager um, repo PR834, if you want to look at more. Um, some other updates. Um, we've talked a few times on these calls about this new uh, bundle format. Um, this is basically a little bit of a change up of how um, that operator uh, metadata is submitted. And this is really um, teasing it apart from uh, kind of this, this one main cluster service version file. 
to um, being separate files. So you can just ship if you you know you use a deployment to run your operator and you want to include an RBAC um, set of rules and you need to ship a secret and a config map with it. Um, you can just throw those into a directory and just like have those files you know stay as regular YAML files standalone instead of having to kind of massage them around in this format. Um, that's roughly um, what it is, and this, what this allows you to do is be able to then pack those inside of a container image, and that's how you host this thing. Instead of having to have any sort of other tooling, you just have an image registry like we all do to use Kubernetes, um, and you can put these catalogs on there as well. Um, so uh, what's exciting is for the community operators, this is the, um, the repo we have in, in GitHub that is the collection of all of the community. Um, operators, you can submit those in both formats, and, and those will be converted behind the scenes um, if uh, they are the older format to the newer bundle format, um, so that newer versions of OLM can fetch those uh, dynamically um, without kind of knowing what happened, um, which is really great. So that'll ease our transition period into this new format, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll move over to that at some date in the future. Um, if you wanted to uh, learn more about um, this OPM tool, which is um, a way to curate your own sets of these catalogs, so this community operators repo is just one giant catalog of all the operators and all of its versions, so you can upgrade between them. Um, you can also make your own catalogs. Um, and so this is a great way to do that. Um, and there's some enhancements, uh, which I wanted to um, circulate this link around. This is um, a better, uh, I guess, more curated view of even a curated catalog. So you can say, I want these very specific versions only. Um, and what this can help you do is to um, remove some of the bulk of, if you're mirroring into like a disconnected environment, um, it, you know, it, it might be gigs and gigs and gigs of containers um, pulling versions of operators that you don't care about. Um, and so you can pick um, a few to be selective about. Um, I wanted to, I think actually I have a screenshot. Yeah, so this is, um, this OPM tool is inside of the operator registry um, repo, and I was just going to click over to um, the doc here um, that has some of the commands. I think I was just going to talk through them a little bit, um, and this gives you a little bit of a sense of how it works. Um, so you have um, this registry, which is, you know, the underlying database that is is holding all of this information. Um, and so you can add and remove things from that database and then serve that out. Um, that's the, the gRPC calls that uh, the cluster can use. Um, but then you've also have this index, um, which uh, can make it easier to ship container images directly to clusters. Um, and uh, it's got kind of the, the same types of um, commands here. So you can see that you're, you're building um, certain bundles um, and then tagging it inside of a, a container. Um, and that is what you would ship to your end user, put it in your registry, and then um, have that added to the cluster. Um, so pretty cool, a lot of nice commands. You could easily add this as part of a, a CI run or something like that um, as part of your release process. Um, I don't know if anybody has any other information to add. Um, there's some export commands as well. So if you want to dump these um, for, you know, offline mirroring, if you do need to um, burn them to a DVD or whatever and get them into a secure environment, you can do that as well. Um, I forget what the fellow's name is that has, um, he is working on some of the U.S. government um, uh, tooling for doing uh, curated operator catalogs, and his company got a contract to um, build some offline capabilities for operators, um, so this type of stuff will be really interesting for him. And I don't know if any of the folks on the OLM team or um, SDK team want to comment on any of this, but it's all um, pretty exciting work. Some of the, the you know, um, reasoning and justification for it are um, just a lot around easing use of loading in operators into clusters for testing as well as curating them if you are an admin team and you want to um, you know ship the same catalog like a five different clusters or something like that so pretty cool let me get back to my presentation uh, i can add one new thing to this um sure. that's okay rob yeah go for um, it. so the past couple of weeks we've merged some new changes that um, a lot of those opm commands currently or i should say used to shell out to Docker and Podman to deal with images. Um, a certain set of them now can do this without shelling out to either Docker or Podman. They don't require a privileged um, 
container daemon of any sort. So that's um, export and then any of the registry add and the index add commands all have this as an option. Okay, very cool. Yeah, so that'll make it a little bit easier to get everybody on the same page without having the same runtime installed. All right, jumping back over. Um, I'll, I'll share out um, all these links uh, so you can have them as well. Um, I wanted to throw out an open question for the group, which is um, I just wanted to gauge the level of interest in multi-arch um, operators and you know running on different um, architectures. Uh, has anybody explored this today or has any interest or heard, hears this from? I can um, tell you a community member in Kiali has, has already semi pushed a PR for this. They want ARM support. Okay, cool. ARM, yep. This is already an ongoing request, at least for our team. Awesome. Yeah, because the, um, so with the, um, you know, uh, registry specs, you can have um, manifest lists of all your um, architectures. And so I think it's more of a question of um, for things like Operator Hub and Scorecard and some of the testing pipelines that we have, it's uh, how do we best support these multi-arch um, operators in terms of testing or um, do, you know, because these environments for uh, things like mainframes or whatever can be a little esoteric versus things like ARM, but you know, we don't have ARM machines in our pipeline today anyways. Um, so uh, it's more of just a, sounds like there is a, at least some interest um, and maybe that'll be a future topic. Um, maybe we can start up on the mailing list about how to best do this. Um, I know Red Hat internally for our, our product teams, we have some stronger guidelines for exactly how to do multi-arch um, that we can uh, learn from as well, but, um, you know, we can tightly control those environments so it's a little bit easier to force folks to do the right thing. Um, any last comments on that? Any other, uh, any use cases that you've heard of? All right, keep it on the back burner and uh, we'll, uh, we'll revisit. Um, next thing I wanted to cover is the Cuddle testing tool. Um, this is a tool from D2IQ um, that they use to um, test some of their operators that they built. Um, and what we're looking at doing for this is to run this as part of the operator scorecard, um, just as a way to, you know, because right now the, um, the scorecard kind of does some like, um, we do some CSV and bundle validation as part of our pipelines, and then the scorecard will um, kind of check some best practices, and make sure that the operator can be installed correctly, none of the um, required uh, CRDs are owned by other things, and you know, like kind of that type of stuff. Um, but uh, it doesn't have any like assertion-based logic around um, go to deploy a database with my database operator or go start this machine learning pipeline or whatever it is um, and assert that it, it actually worked the way that it did. Um, and so that's what the Cuddle tool brings you. Um, and so it's uh, in the Kudo Builder um, org on GitHub, but I thought it would be interesting to walk through their um, writing your first test guidelines. Um, this is a really good example of, um, so this uh, is just really simple, an Nginx deployment um, with three replicas, um, and then um, you're asserting that you did get three uh, replicas out of it at the end. Um, that's kind of, you know, as easy as it gets, um, and you can run through a bunch of different test cases um, with this. And I think it'll be a really exciting way to, um, we want to allow folks to package these up and send them uh, to our pipeline. Um, as a way to actually, uh, you know, validate that this works. Um, I think with the end goal of it would be awesome to have a bunch of different Kubernetes providers hooked into um, a test framework where we can, you know, test out the current versions of all some of the cloud offerings or some of the other um, offers and then even test pre-release versions of Kubernetes um, against these operators and things like that. Uh, that would be pretty cool. So this is just setting some of the groundwork for that. Um, so you can find more information um, at cuddle.dev, um, and you'll find this guide here. Um, there's a few other um, kind of uh, tips and tricks and things like that that are kind of interesting. Um, but for the most part, it, it's uh, pretty straightforward, which is really cool. Uh, I'm curious, I don't know if anyone, has anyone played around with this already or has a testing framework that they even like today that they're using? 
I hesitate to say, but I've worked with Cuddle. <laughs> uh, I, I was one that um, you know separated it out of Kudo, and um, okay. I'll, I'll add. I'll just add out there that there is um, there was a, a conference, a virtual conference that was put together. A thirty-minute video was created on on getting started with this, and uh, I can make sure that people have access to that. Yeah, that would be great. Um, yeah, let's let's definitely get that out. I think it would be interesting to a lot of folks. How is this different? I mean, clearly I can see kind of how it's different, but what, I mean, what about Molecule? I thought that was supposed to be the operator test framework. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't know enough. Um, uh, th this is Ken speaking again. I, I will uh, throw out there that there is also a meeting with the SIG testing um, group today um, in a couple hours, and we'll be showing Cuddle off to them um, the, the, I guess the creation of Cuddle and the, the reason it exists is, you know, uh, is consistent with what we were trying to do with Kudo, which was to have a declarative way to manage operators. And it just made sense to have a declarative way of testing. And, and the tests actually are consistent with what you would expect your YAML or your experience with Kubernetes to be. And we just use them as either um, up, applies or updates, um, oftentimes with strategic merging. So you can be brief um, as well as asserts um, and it, it's still got some you know runway there's still things that we'd like to add in and, and take advantage of but i'll have to look at the other other options out there um, I, I i wouldn't expect this to be a an all-in-one solution for sure and it, it's definitely probably best as more of an end-to-end -end test than it would be or well, certainly more so than a unit test um, there are some elements of it that work well with an integration test, though, as well. Yeah, Molecule is the testing tool um, for Ansible, uh, and Ansible-based operators uh, scaffold a lot of resources to make Molecule testing of your operators easier, and uh, that work is sort of alongside this. Uh, okay. As I understand it, the Molecule testing framework, the operator doesn't necessarily have to be implemented in Ansible. No, 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 but that's why it has been integrated into the project, um, so that you're, you can continue testing all of your Ansible content, including operators, with the same tools that you use to test your Ansible. Okay. Um, and yeah, you can use it for whatever you want, but uh, Cuddle is, uh, they're, not, they're not quite overlapping. The other little bit of information here from the SDK side is that we're uh, trying to integrate Cuddle into our scorecard. So our new scorecard is going to be like a very generalized test runner, based like an image runner. Uh, and we'll have some custom test images, one of which will be a Cuddle-based test image that basically ex executes your uh, Cuddle tests and then outputs the results in a way that scorecard can consume them. Uh, so be on the lookout for that in the next probably a month or two. Um, and Ken, like, if you're interested in helping us integrate that, that would be absolutely awesome. Yeah, I'm totally in. Let's, uh, let's organize around that. That'd be great. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to that. I think it's going to be awesome. Um, any other questions on... Uh, testing and in that whole topic before we move on all right last topic of my um, slides I just wanted to talk through some of the research that um, the Red Hat um, user experience design research team did around operators um, and uh, want to get this um, information out far and wide, you know, it's, uh, there's nothing um, proprietary here. Um, these folks just happen to work for Red Hat. Um, so at the high level, um, so this was a pretty small survey in the sense that um, it was seven internal operator authors and two external operator authors. We're going to do a follow-up study um, to try to get at least five more external operator authors um, to even out those numbers. Um, but uh, just talking them through how they built their first operators, any pain points, where they are today, that kind of thing. Um, and I thought the interesting thing that, that jumped out to me is um, even though everybody was familiar with Kubernetes, just, you know, either 
a user and you know is creating deployments and like debugging pods and all that kind of stuff, they still had to learn a lot of kube fundamentals to build an operator just because um, you're using the deeper parts of it than you get um, kind of if you scratch the surface on just running some applications and talking about how the control loops work and um, the caching layers and some of the things like that. Um, so everybody had to learn something, which was really interesting. Um, and that kind of feeds into the next uh, topic, which is that um, the docs and some of the learning resources we're seeing a little bit is scattered, um, and especially actual examples of real operators. Um, I know that the framework is guilty of having some of its um, first things, you know, building um, your sample operators that are not real applications. You know, they're just basically standing up one or two pods, and that's basically it. So I think that's um, some uh, good advice that we need to uh, move forward with. Um, folks were um, using the SDK, um, which is great, and um, are uh, doing some testing but want better end-to-end -end test support. Um, so that's good to hear as folks want to, um, you know, get production quality operators um, and if they are, you know, going to be pursuing this as part of a, a community or um, an organization that's going to buy or um, sell this operator, uh, you know, they need to be bulletproof. So that's awesome. And, we, you know, this kind of very much um, lines up with the roadmap that we have planned for the operator framework. Um, some of the, um, the upgrading of the SDK itself, um, there was some concern for breaking changes that were hard to find. I know that we're, um, you know, we just adopted um, some of the lower level tools um, from uh, some of the SIGs um, with the um, controller runtime and the Kube Builder work. Um, so I think that kind of falls under this. Um, that was probably uh, not a hard to find breaking change um, as we change the project layout. Um, but hopefully going forward, uh, we won't have those types of issues. Um, one cool thing is the, the capability model um, is used um, by all folks. Everyone used that as a reference point for kind of how to chart their path with the operator. Um, the confusion stems from um, the capability model is vague by design because it can't talk to every type of application or every single kind of um, custom situation. Um, but that confusion, you know, leads to folks not knowing how all of the steps of the capability model um, fit their operator. And so I think there's some maybe some work to do there. Um, but it is great to see that it is used as a reference for other folks. Um, and so like I said, uh, this is a pretty small sample, but you can learn a lot from just uh, small samples of folks. Um, and you know, we're, we're clearly seeing some trends here. Um, any questions on that? I have a few more slides. I'm just digging in a little bit deeper, but um, anybody want to plus one anything or are these things that you run into? Better ETE test support, although I don't know how much you guys are going to be able to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll plus one. This is really great to get this kind of feedback. Um, yeah, I know it's a small uh, sample set, sample set, but uh, really, really great. Yeah, this is good to know. Awesome. Let's dig in a little bit deeper. Um, so the um, some of the major conclusions here uh, around docs were that it wasn't clear how stuff fit like fully end to end, going from I've never you know written any of this before to downloading the SDK to getting started, um, and then uh, wanting to reference real code. And this is something that I um, see a lot when I talk to folks is like well, show me the best operator out there. Or, you know, and it's more like, okay, well, what type of application are you going for? Um, what technology do you think you're going to use? Or do you not care about that? And, like, um, it's just uh, tough. So I think getting some um, some better results there and, and not having to just tell folks, oh, go Google it, um, and having some best-of-breed operators, which um, I think Operator Hub does help to highlight, um, but not all of those um, make it easy to get back to their source code and things like that. So I think there's some work to do there. Um, and then uh, testing, once again, um, you know, there are some testing facilities inside of the SDK for folks that are using that. Um, obviously need to be building up those more and more, um, and we'll be doing that over time. Um, and then 
upgrades and you know the concern of breaking the operator um, I'm gonna read into this on that it's both of new versions of the SDK as well as new versions of kube and then how those influence new releases of your operator um, you know like that three-way matrix um, can be pretty challenging um, as well as when APIs are either being deprecated or um, you know changed around um, in either upstream kube or um, some of the kubernetes offerings um, and understanding the dependencies around all of that um, I think completely makes sense Pause there really quick. Comments, questions, plus ones. All right. All right. Um, on the capability model, um, folks, I think we're very successful with this, using it as a guiding star. This is exactly what it's designed to do. Um, and uh, you know, the structure of this does make it a little bit difficult to figure out how it applies to you, but it's it's kind of a critical thinking exercise on the um, behalf of the user. Um, but maybe we can strengthen this a little bit. I know that um, Daniel Messer uh, wrote a bunch more actual text descriptions um, that are in GitHub that kind of talk to each one of these things. And there's like, um, like questions to think about for um, how to know if, if these apply to you, and then some guiding principles around what to do, and then some examples. Um, so uh, maybe in the, in the follow-up study, making sure that folks see that document, at least after the, um, the study is over, to get their feedback on that, I think maybe would be a really good step. Um, and then lastly, some of the, like I guess, a little less uh, major outcomes um, were other types of resources, so um, are there uh, more real-time things like Slack? I know we've got the Kubernetes operators channel there, um, like code um, examples, you know, other than the ones that we have um, highlighted already in books and other things like that. Um, one thing that we do have underway is the operator framework website. Um, this is moving a little bit slower than I would like, but um, we're, you know, it's a lot of work to write all this content. Um, and uh, so if anybody wants to help get involved with that, um, I think those, uh, those um, repos are currently in um, kind of the person who was messing around with some of the Hugo stuff in his personal GitHub, um, but will be moved to the operator uh, framework org here really soon. Um, and so um, we'll, we'll take any pull request that anybody wants to send our way. Um, and that'll you know, talk a little bit more about the capability model and things like that. You know, it, um, this is really great insight, and what I'm curious about, and perhaps there's a, you know, a room for our, our conversation here, um, having exposure to the API machinery where they're looking to rewrite um, uh, essentially the philosophy and, and discipline necessary to have a, a good API, uh, and that is specifically around, a, you know, a web API uh, resources, which then are tangentially connected to clients and to controllers, obviously. Um, I, what I'm seeing is a lot of people expressing that there's a lack of information and I'm wondering who's responsible, right? And I feel like in order for our operator SDK to be successful, that education has to be there. Um, do we take mm -hmm. ownership of that and just drive it? Or, you know, do we come together as a community and, and, and you know, I, I don't know. That's, that's really the question is there's a lot of, uh, organizations and, and frameworks out there, I think, that would benefit from it, and someone's got to own it. And I don't really see a full owner unless we're saying that we're looking to do that. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, if if it's how our users are successful, then we probably at least need to half own it. Um, but yeah, coming together with that SIG or the other other folks um, makes sense too. Okay, yeah, sounds like we're on the same thought. I, maybe we just need to start making some connections or, I, or yeah, I, well, you made the comment, it's um, taking longer and there's a lot of effort to create this website. I, I believe that, you know, content creation is usually un underestimated. Um, and so, you know, what can we do to drive it? Uh, it, it seems like an, 
I guess it's not a surprise that it's an afterthought from a developer standpoint, um, but it also seems like it's absolutely necessary to see a high um, adoption of what we are all interested in, I would hope. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, the just the Cuddle website that we were looking at earlier is a really great example of this, um, where I think we've got a little bit more content to cover than that, but it's a really nicely put together website that, you know, is front and center with, here's what this is and here's how to get started. Um, some things that this website I think will do really well is have a unified place for just even the definition of an operator. Here's what we see an operator doing. Um, things like the capability model. How do you like, how do I know if these operators are good or not? Um, and then expressing the differences of the different types of SDKs that you can use or you don't have to use an SDK and where the lifecycle manager fits in um, and you know all that stuff is all kind of wrapped up in there. Um, so hopefully all of that and more are covered there, um, including I think you know this type of information as well. Um, I, I think you made a really good point. Um, whoever was talking, I think that was Ken, um, which is that you know, operators are heavily aligned with and dependent on Kubernetes APIs. And I don't think much operator documentation calls out that um, you need to be very aware of those API conventions um, and patterns, and that writing an operator, people will be using those APIs and expect them to follow the same conventions as Kubernetes APIs. Um, so I, I do think there's a big gap there right now that we could do a lot to help flesh out. Yeah, agreed. Evan, yeah, it was Ken. That, that, yeah. Um, I, I, what we are going to add or change, or what's being suggested at this point uh, to the API element is the, when it was a, well, the content that's available online today doesn't even include the concept of CRDs. And so CRDs will be added. Um, but as, exactly, um, I think we're aligned on that. I, I, I think if we allow them to do APIs and then we do operators, there's still going to be a little bit of a mismatch, and we it, it would be best to unify around this somehow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Great. Um, that is all the um, research uh, output, um, and I think that's everything that I – I had plans, uh, now I think we're into the open agenda of the call. Um, does anybody have anything that they want to chat about? Hey everyone, this is uh, Matt from the Operator Enablement Team. Just letting you all know, just in case anyone's asking you, uh, we are in the process of getting the interactive learning exercises at learn.openshift.com, um, specifically the Operator Framework ones, updated to latest version of operator SDK and um, 4X environments. So I know we've had a lot of people ask about this and we are working with the Catacoda team who are the ones that develop that interactive terminal environment and uh, that should be ready soon. Awesome, yeah, those Catacoders are a really great way to, you know, go claim a VM that already has all this stuff set up on it and get a cluster with the lifecycle manager and build something with the SDK, things like that. So, very cool. Thank you for all that hard work. Anybody something working on something cool? Oh, go ahead. I have something to ask. Um, so, the service mesh team is currently <clears throat> uh, undergoing work to get disconnected mode to work, right? Not pulling stuff down from Quay, but from some internal repository. So there were discussions last week about the whole related images stuff and how that's not implemented yet. I guess the question is, is there a time frame when the related images stuff is going to be implemented whereby the the SHAs can get replaced or the SHAs can replace the tags, the whole annotation stuff. I don't know if you if you remember the emails going off last week, but there are some issues there that we need to get fixed in order to at least make things easier. We have workarounds now, but we'd like to get that stuff in. Um, I I can probably help with this, but I, I do think I'm curious why this is important um, because essentially what we're, maybe I should level set so we're talking about the same thing. Um, right now there's a related image field in the CSV 
that you can list out um, images that your operator right. might require at a particular right. version. So when you pull that manifest, you can read that list, and then that's another thing, another set of images to mirror to make sure your operator works offline or disconnected. Um, the thing that hasn't been implemented is uh, a feature that OLM would do at runtime, where it takes those values in the related images fields and projects them down onto the template annotations of your deployment spec so that when we stamp out a deployment, those values are available via like the downward API at runtime. Um, right. So the reason that that has not been a priority is because you probably already have to, you, I, sorry, not probably, you already have to do the work of placing those images uh, in the related images field. And so if you're already doing that step, you can also do some replacement elsewhere for matching the same string in the CSV um, so that so you don't have to rely it, on. So then is it not true then if we place the tags in the related images, OLM will not be able to determine what those SHAs should be and replace the SHAs right in with the tags? Uh, I should say yes and no. OLM doesn't do anything with the related images. It's it's purely uh, metadata that's used by tooling for building offline catalogs. So right now what it will do is if you put a tag, it'll mirror to a tag if you're using the offline tooling in um, the OC tool. If you put a SHA, it'll mirror to a SHA. But for OCP disconnected, um, it's a requirement that all mirrored images be digests. Okay. So, so the, the answer to your question is like, we don't have a timeline for it because it hasn't been a priority. Um, and so what I, what I do want to understand is why it's a priority for you. Well, I was so under the assumption that in our related images, we could just put what we've been, use tags, right? And then somehow some magic under the covers would say, okay, well, we're going to mirror this tag to this SHA, and then that SHA is then going to be placed, like you said, in the well, in the pod template of the de of the deployment, so we can then pass it down to environment variables for the operator to use. But if you're saying no, that's never going to be the case. You have to put the SHA in the CSV. Then yes, clearly, you know, big deal. We'll just put it in the related images and in the and then wherever we else we need it. That just means um, manual steps. I, I wouldn't say never. I, I didn't mean to, uh, to, <laughs> to say that we should never do this. Um, I, I was just trying to explain why it's not been a priority now. I, I think okay. the idea is a good one. Well, okay, so if you're gonna ask why is it a priority, it, if that feature <laughs> existed, then we would use it. So that, right. that, that's my only concern. Okay, um, thanks. I can uh, come back and talk about more, more of that later. All right, any other topics, questions, concerns? Anyone building anything cool? So uh, I had a question. Yeah, go for it. Uh, how are you guys uh, setting up and tearing down um, Kubernetes environments when you're doing uh, testing? Basically, right now, um, I'm using a proprietary uh, tool uh, in my company, um, but I'm looking for a standardized way to, to create Kubernetes clusters as set up and tear down for a test um, in GKE, uh, vanilla COPS, um, OpenShift, all of these. Sorry, it's a very uh, broad topic. Well, no, th this is why I actually yeah, plus cool. one the uh, well, bullet point one of the slides. Better ETE testing. <laughs> that this is that was what I was thinking. Yeah. So, like, if I understand correctly, right now there is no standard way to do this, right? It's... Me personally, I stand up my own cluster my own way, and then I run my molecule tests to test my operator that's what i do it's all manual okay. stuff. right now we use yeah. uh, PyTest actually yeah i would say that uh it depends on what you're doing which is probably part of the problem um, we use terraform quite heavily um along with uh, ansible 
Uh, I would add that Kudo, or I'm sorry, Cuddle, um, that test um, tool that we were talking about actually has a pretty tight integration with Kind. And if if Kind is the kind of cluster you want, it's it's kind of baked in, you get a small version of things, but that doesn't really help you when you're looking to do like GPU oriented things or, or large cluster oriented things. And uh, yeah, so I don't think there's a, a I don't think there's a one all, uh, one one solution out there that solves it all yet. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was thinking actually, if you want to just create the clusters and not kind of like uh, simulate them with uh, kind or um, anything like that, maybe do it with uh, GitHub Actions or something. But in very early stage, I don't have this naked yet. Uh, that's for me. Um, if, if I could just boil down the question. So what you're asking for is like, is there some tool that we all use to just spin up and spin down Kubernetes clusters? Uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, um, you have a test suite, right, of multiple tests, I guess, and you do a setup and a teardown before and after, right? So um, let's say the suite is done with um, uh, Cuddle. I have to look into that tool. Um, but I mean, the the teardown and, and setup um, are are not, I think, right. So like, we're all address, I think, a similar problem, right? I mean, we're all addressing, I think, maybe, because we want our operators to work on on as many environments as possible, basically. Yeah. Yes. Part of the problem. Sorry. Yeah. Part of the problem, right, is that there there isn't a definitive cluster flavor. Uh, you know, part of the standard includes uh, an openness to what you're doing for networking, openness to what you're using for containerization. Um, it, to to propose that there is a thing that is your standard is to, you know, cookie cut something that works for you and maybe not all the things. So. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the problem as much as I uh, figured out. Yeah. Yeah. Operator think, development the hard way. <laughs> Yeah, I think for like a pure cube answer, I would probably suggest that we should look into something like Kindy. That seems to be gaining some traction even upstream with people using Kindy as the as the way to spin up and spin down Kubernetes clusters under test um, inside of their proud config. So Kindy might be something to look into. Um, uh, that would be the, the 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 best answer I have uh, for right now of how I would suggest doing it is is. There's a GitHub action that probably spins up a Kindy cluster for you to test with, and then, you know, it's a, just a bunch of Docker containers, so just tear it down and you're, you're good to go. So um, that would be the best thing to look into for that side of the test today. Um, yeah. I don't know if that helps at all. Uh, okay, I'll look into it. Thanks, guys. I'm oh, sorry, you were saying Kindy? Yeah, sorry, uh, uh, K-I-N-D, Kubernetes Indoc. Okay, got you, got you. Yeah, no, I apologize, that's <laughs> explicit, should be better. I'll add it to the chat. All right, I think that brings us to the end of our agenda, unless there's any other. Go into ice. Sold. All right, thank you all for joining. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. Great presentation. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Stay safe.